Alrighty, today we're going to work a little bit more on shooting um, a highly reflective object that's going to have some spectral reflections. We'll talk a little bit about the transition from spectral reflections to the uh, transition to the shadows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I got going on here is I've got my laptop tethered to my Canon, whatever that is, and I've got my uh, light. So my light is pointed down, or it will be, pointed down at my subject. Let me just put this down. Point down at my subject. So it's about, I don't know, 90 degrees, probably. I don't know, don't break out the protactors, but I think it's something around there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a photograph of this initial setup. I'm gonna do three shots. One with the light raw, one with the light scrimmed, and one with the light bounced. And we'll ascertain which one's gonna work better for, uh, for this application. So let's start off with the one that is just the item uh, lit harshly from above. So raw light, harsh from above. I got a few items on the table here, some shiny stuff. Um, also too, there's a difference between different types of metal, different types of shiny stuff. They, they have sort of different inherent qualities of reflection. You can have polished plastic, um, you can have stainless steel, you can have brushed aluminum. Um, and well, with this one here, I've got like a little door knocker on here that's got sort of like a nickel finish on it. So they all have sort of different properties that will change the way they reflect light. Um, but for the purpose of this illustration, I'm ganging them all together and calling them shiny objects. So let's see what happens here when we light this with just one harsh light from above. And me being old school guy, um, I'm gonna use a meter because I don't know, because I do that. Uh, F11, so F11 on my camera, I got Capture One tethered up. Is it tethered? Doesn't seem to be tethered. Capture One should be tethered. Um, there we go. Uh, let me just fix the exposure on this. So that should be, I said F11. We'll take this to F11. And let's see what a normal exposure looks like. Normal meaning I'm taking an incident light reading off of the light that's falling off of it. Let's see what that looks like. So F11, take my picture, and that looks like shit. Now, why does it look so bad? Well, it looks bad because the light is reflecting spectral highlights back to my camera right off of the products. What is, what's, what's all that coming from? Well, we talked a little bit about angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. That's what's going on here. So when we look at this shot of the, um, the knife, spe specifically the knife and that little portion of the uh, stapler, um, they look terrible, there's no detail in it. The calculator, maybe that's not so bad, um, but I think it, it's a little bit too dark. It's over contrast, but you can't turn the light up because the background's already blowing out. So what's maybe another lighting option? Well, let's try this. I've got a scrim, a scrim I quite like, I bought it years ago. Um, don't get hung up on the scrim thing though, because like I paid a hundred bucks, I think for this thing, like that's outrageous for a piece of silk. I, I was stupid when I was younger, but anyways, um, it's a nice scrim, but the scrim itself, I'm going to place it in between. See, there's my light. My light is coming through the scrim. You can actually see the shadow on the table where it's uh, not actually going through the scrim. And what is the scrim doing? Well, a couple of important things. First off, first and foremost, the scrim is changing my light source. How is it changing my light source? Well, it's changing my light source from being a small light source. Originally, that's a seven inch reflector that it's in right now. So it's changing it from that small light source to a larger light source, which is, I don't know, what is that? Maybe 36 inches across, roundabout. So it's going from small to large. The other uh, important aspect of what that's doing, it's changing it from a rather harsh light to a little bit more of a diffused light. Like you can see when you look at the bulb, like we look right into the bulb on here, that's really harsh. But when we look through the screen, we see that it's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more diffused. Um, that's gonna produce a different light quality falling on our products. What kind of light quality? Let's see. Something else that's important about it. It's also cutting back the intensity of the light. 
because the light is now being diffused over a larger surface, it's losing some of its intensity. So I was at F11, what am I at now? Five, six and a half, quite a bit. So I've lost quite a bit of light by spreading the light and diffusing the light. So five, six and a half. Let's change our exposure on our camera to five, six, well, we'll go six, three. What's that looking like? A little bit better. Now, it's better because it's more overall diffused, but it still has way too much um, spectral highlights in the knife and in the um, stapler. How do you fix that at this point? Well, a couple of different things you can do. Um, I used to use this stuff a lot called FunTac. Um, I, what I want to do is I want to change the angle of reflection and the angle of incidence. So I can do that without disturbing the integrity of the shot if I just sort of maybe prop a portion of this up. Now I'll put the highlight, I'll, I'll put the highlight kind of through it a little bit so it runs right through. And you'll see what I mean. Because changing the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection is probably the easiest way to get rid of a spectral highlight. But watch what this does. Because we had a light that was quite white. Now we're going to have a light, same exposure. But when we look on the, on the knife, see how the knife is getting a little bit gray? I haven't mixed enough of that on the, uh, on the stapler. Let me get it a little bit more. It's a bit heavier. I'm going to raise that up a little bit more, soften it a little bit, and give it a slight twist away from the camera a little bit and make that even more obvious. Let me try it around about there. So what's happening in this area now? Ah, oh, that's much nicer. Now, if your client had, uh, you know, if you're shooting something like this for a client, they're probably gonna wanna read all that stuff that's inscribed on the stapler. It's probably a logo on there or something. So I know now that if I modify where this scrim is in terms of its placement, because I can just move it around, pull it back a little bit more. Is that gonna change the highlight on there? Yeah, by moving it back, you can see now in that upper right area, there's much more detail in it. And all I've done, I haven't really changed the light source. I've changed the angle of reflection off of the product onto my scrim. So it's an important, um, I would say that's an important ability to be able to do that because you're controlling the subtleties of the surface of the subject. Also, we noticed, we talked a little bit about the highlight to edge transfusion, uh, transition, sorry, I'll do more about that next week. But in this instance, you can see it's gone from being totally a spectral highlight, there's a little bit of gradati gradation in it now uh, that runs across it. Now I could sort of play around with it a little bit more um, to fix the highlight in, the, um, in that screwdriver and stuff. I think you get the idea. But, but that's my second way that I could use to light this. What would I do for my third way? Well, the easiest way, using the same light, the easiest way is to just remove my scrim, <coughs> scrim, remove my scrim, and um, what I'll do this time. Again, don't get hung up on the scrim. This is, I say I spent like 100 bucks on this. You could use a piece of tracing paper. Uh, someone suggested a shower curtain, that's a good idea. Parchment paper, um, tissue paper, anything like that. Anything that was gonna diffuse it will work as a scrim for the purposes of this. I, I get during this sort of, COVID scenario, we're all sort of grasping at, uh, at stuff, trying to get caught up here. So do the best you can. So my last one, I'm gonna take my light, I'm gonna just bounce it off the ceiling. Now, what have I done here? Well, this is changing my light source even more because now I've gone from that little seven inch, um, little seven inch reflector that we had in there. Uh, we were using that to, to light the object. Then we went to a 36 inch um, area to light the object, which was my scrim effectively. Now, I'm taking my light and I'm going from my light to the ceiling back down to the table. We talked a little bit about um, what happens to light as it, as, it, as it moves away from us or the inverse square law. The light is now traveling five feet to the ceiling and another, I don't know, six feet, eight feet depth back down to the table and it's hitting that surface on, up there. So it's now, instead of it being 36 inches, it's probably about 10 feet across. So my light is gonna be even softer and larger. What's that gonna do to our, our set? Well, let's have a look and see. First off, again, inverse square law, I'm down to F4 from 5.6. Light's at the same power. Why is it lower? Well, it's lower because the light's traveling further. As the light travels further, it falls off incrementally. <coughs> Pardon me. So let's see what this one looks like.
Now I'll change my f-stop to f4. And I suspect this light is going to be even softer. But what's it going to do to the products? Oh, look at that. That looks like shit too. Because what's happening now, my light source is almost too big. It's lacking any contrast whatsoever. So my calculator, my, um, my stapler, my knife, they're all reflecting the area of the ceiling above us. Angle of incidence, angle of reflection. So it's one big light source that's being reflected. Can we change this by taking this down? Let's have a look. If I just lay this flat, No, I don't know. Is that going to do it? Probably do it a little bit. Let me bring that into the frame a little bit more. Now, you notice if I bring it back, what's happening? You see on the back right side of the stapler, the light is falling off because my light is pointed uh, more above. If I push the light in more or I bounce it further towards the camera, is that going to change it even more? Yeah, probably a little bit. Angle of incidence, angle of reflection. That's now going to be reflecting more of the back wall. So it's going to be much darker. Now you can see I got a little bit more of a gradient in there. Now we could use other things like negative fill cards and et cetera, et cetera, inside the shot. But what I want you to do for this assignment, the last one of the year, is to do similar to what I've done. Three things. You've, you're going to shoot with a direct light source, a diffused light source, any diffusion material that you can find, and then a bounced, well, it doesn't have to be a bounced source. Use some other light source that you want. It doesn't even have to be a flash. If you want to use a tungsten light, you want to use a desk lamp, uh, speed lights if you have them at home, that's fine. Something like that, that is a constant, not a constant light source, but a repeatable light source that you can actually uh, set something up and it'll stay constant in its output throughout the experiment for you. Anyways, try that. As always, any questions or any comments, just let me know. Uh, here to help you if you need it. But let's see what your results are. And, and we're not necessarily looking for what well, we are. We're looking for what, what type of lighting would work best, what makes the prettiest picture, as it were. Um, but more an exercise to see what different kind of lights do different kinds of things when we use the scrim as a modifier. So let's have a look at that, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with next week. Alrighty, thanks.